Hello, Marcel here to show you how to create a fluid mesh from multiple particle objects and how to simulate persistent object deformations such as bending metals. So I have a scene here where I have three distinct particle objects all emitting fluid in some way. I have this central fluid volume which is essentially my main pool of water. Then I have another sphere volume which is supposed to drop into this main pool. And then I also have a particle flow object emitting fluid particles into the fluid container which we have here bounded by this collision object. I have pre-simulated the scene and as you can see these three objects are clearly interacting with each other so the sphere is falling into my volume and then we also have the particles which are emitted into this container as well. And the problem is that these three objects are all separate. If we wanted to render them we would have to create three different meshes. For a real world scenario however it would be great if we could render them all as the same mesh. For this purpose we have lucid fluid mesher object available through the lucid toolbar which is the second last icon from the right. If I click this button a new lucid mesher object is created and its icon is clearly visible inside the viewport. I'm just gonna set it aside for now and if I go to its properties we can see our standard fluid settings which are used to control the way that the fluid mesh is generated and then we have the objects to mesh properties. The first property allows us to show the viewport icon or hide it and it is usually a good idea to show this icon because you can always select this mesh object in the future. Then we have our meshed objects list. In this list we can actually pick the objects that we want meshed. For the example seen here let me just click add and then I will select my main fluid volume and as soon as I select it we get a mesh generated for it. And then I will also add my sphere volume and in order not to select our box again I'm just going to use the add multiple option and I'm going to select the sphere from the drop down list. Finally my goal is to also select this particles object but there is no way to selected from the scene because it is a particle flow operator and it is only available through the particle view. So the trick I will use in this case is I will go to my particle view and I will select my lucid fluid manually and then I will open my max script listener and I will see the name of the object that was selected. In this case it is the lucid fluid 001. I'll just copy this name and I will clear my listener command. Since I already have the lucid mesher selected I can just use the selected max script token and I will type in the command append then I will type the dollar sign to denote the selected object and objects and I will paste the name of my lucid fluid operator. This is just one way to add this operator into the lucid measure and there will be more ways to do this through the user interface in the future. Now that we have all three of these objects in our list over here our fluid mesh will encapsulate the particles from all of them so indeed if I scrub through my timeline you can see that the fluid mesh does take into account the particles from the particle flow, from our sphere and from the main fluid volume. However, it might be useful for us not to see the particles from original simulated objects as well as the particles from particle flow object. And to do this, the measure objects provides a couple of useful buttons. First one is called hide all. And what this will do is it will hide all of the objects in this list which are currently visible inside the scene. Just like using hide all, I can also use show all button to display the objects back inside my viewport. However, particle flow particles are still visible and that is because this operator is not a typical scene object. But I can still hide it by opening up my particle view and just disabling the display operator inside the particle flow event. And what we're left with now is just our particle mesh which combines all of these objects together. In the if I play back the animation you can see that this mesh is now updating even though those objects are hidden. It is still taking into account the particles that they contribute to the simulation. Now I can go and select this mesh just like I did before and adjust parameters like granularity so I can change this to a smaller value if I want more details for the particles or I can change things like isotropic type of the mesh or even texture generation. If I render the scene at this moment we will get our particle volume mesh present inside the render and the other objects will not be visible because they are hidden within the scene. It is useful to note that when simulating your particles with Lucid if you are planning to later on mesh them with this lucid mesher object you might want to simulate them as particles and not as meshes because this mesher object will only be able to accept objects that are actually particles. Some other interesting effects you might try is excluding certain objects from particle mesher and seeing what happens. For example I can take my overall box volume and remove it from the simulation. Let me just hide all the objects. So if I take my main volume and remove it we just see the 
the effect that it has on the simulated particle flow object and my falling sphere, which might be useful and might even create some interesting effects inside your scene. You could also have multiple particle measure objects and they could even be referencing the same particles between each other. So I could have another measure object, for example, which is just using the overall volume and the sphere and another one which is using the overall volume and my particle flow fluid with it. So the possibilities there are endless and it really depends on what kind of result you're looking for in your project. For the second part of this video, I want to show how to create bands in objects that are persistent and stay with your object shape after it was bent in the first place. This may be useful for simulating things like bending metal rods or even more complex effects like car crashes. So I have this scene here which is available on our samples page and inside we have box which is set to convex collision and we have a few other boxes which are also convex and static collision objects just there to hold our rod in place. The animated convex box is going down and it's supposed to push our rod here which is simulating using soft body material with more or less default parameters assigned to it. So I have set my simulation type to locked simulation and this way we can see the effects independent of which frame we're on. And if I go and simulate my scene at this moment we can see that this main box is pushing our rod downwards but when it is going back up our rod resumes to have its previous shape and just bounces around. And to achieve the effect of this rod maintaining the band instead of going back to its initial shape we need to use the parameter which we have explored in the previous video called plastic creep and plastic threshold. If I just change the plastic threshold to a different value, something like 0.65, at this frame we don't really see many changes happening. However, now if I just adjust the plastic creep a little bit, maybe set it to something like 0.001, all of a sudden the simulation changes in a big way and now as soon as our big box presses down on the rod and it goes back up, the rod doesn't resume its previous shape. So the real magic here is to use the plastic creep parameter in conjunction with the plastic threshold and set the plastic creep to some low value. It doesn't really matter which value you set as long as it's low, so I can even set 0.1 and it will still have the desired effect. These parameters are global, so all of the objects that you're simulating will have the same behavior of bending and not restoring their initial shape. However, this will only apply to soft body objects, so you could still have fluids and inflatables and even rigid bodies inside of the same scene. Again, you can download the scene in our download section. So I hope you found some of these hints useful. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial.